I never do this, but this time around I had to. And what I mean by that is that I've assembled some notes that I quickly wrote down before recording today's episode simply because there was a whole thought process going through my mind in in the sense that this particular operation or project that I'm discussing here, Project Chime, is a perfect example of multiple facets of the way that these agencies work to not only cover things up, but to perform um, or to put out a form of psychological warfare in a certain sense. So if you'll excuse me here or pardon me for reading just in the beginning and then I'll, I'll get right to it. So did you ever think that the mainstream media re- would report something like this? Because this may be a real time example of psychological warfare. And I'll get to that in a second. Now, here's the important part. I would like you guys to really listen. The mistake we made long ago as a species, I would argue, was thinking that radio waves are only good for radio. When in reality, a radio wave is just a type of electromagnetic radiation. It's a particular strain of it, so to speak. And we have given it the label radio wave. And that may in fact, in in, in and of itself, be a form of psychological warfare that's been used to let us think that radio waves are limited to just broadcasting music and sound and things like that when in reality it could do so much more and this is a perfect example of suppression to the public and to the people from preventing them from realizing that a lot of what we need and i've said this before whether it's technologically spiritually environmentally or you name it is right in front of us is all around us so most of the reason why this is blocked out is due to financial greed but over time financial greed seemed to have been put to the side it's still important don't get me wrong but it seemed to have been put to the side simply because the main reason now for preventing people from finding out is because knowledge is the new currency in a certain sense now project chime what does that stand for it stands for canadian hydrogen intensity mapping experiment now This is supposedly a front, so to speak. And I have some articles here, which is what I'm referring to um, in the beginning when I said, did you ever think the mainstream media would report this? And these articles are from all the way from Global News, which is a big Canadian website, a newscasting company, uh, to cbc.ca, all the way to CNN, to National Geographic, um, to TheVerge.com, and many different sources. I mean... uh, wtop.com and uh, country105.com, more local stations and all that. And this is a form of trying to utilize a very public front-end project by hiding it in plain sight so nobody would think to look. Now, here's the thing. My research has found that, not that this is for sure, but there is a proposal that Project Chime is actually run by the NSA and the CIA. Now, why do I say this? Okay, first off, nobody would think to look, let's be honest here, nobody would think to look in the middle of nowhere in Canada that a a handful of satellites above ground that we can see if you just drive by would be so crucial to the NSA and the CIA's operation. And the reason for that is because most of what they do is underground. And most of the people they have working on this are in the thousands of, of, of numbers. So there's thousands of people and working on preventing this. And underneath these satellites underground are where the thousands of people work. Now, in order to relay information quickly and securely, sometimes it has to be done in person. So the deep underground military bases, the dumbs, connect from underneath, not just all over the world, but from underneath certain parts of the United States, which is quite drastic and quite vast, actually, all the way to different deep underground military bases in Canada. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, the Canadian government pretty much goes along with whatever the U.S. does. I mean, let's face it. I'm not trying to get into the nitty gritty of the politics, but when we take a big step back, the Canadian government pretty much says, OK, Sure, we'll do that. They kind of go along with whatever the U.S. decides, whether, you know, a Republican is in charge or a Democrat's in charge. It doesn't usually matter. Now, here's the best part about Project Chime. Project Chime is really a front end cover for blocking text messages, mainly in the West, in North America. That's their main concern because they have other stations put in outposts around uh, Europe and Africa and all that. But certain radio waves that are being broadcasted from outer space 
and we know this for a fact at this point. There's radio waves that come in every 16 seconds or 15 minutes, and then there's ones that come once every five years. There's ones that just come once, and they send a, a message through radio waves, and we can track it from many light years away, and then they don't come back for another five, 10 years, or they don't come back at all. But here's the thing. The news, the mainstream media, and this is a form of the CIA psychological warfare operation because they have assets implanted in the mainstream news media to tell the news what to broadcast and what to cover. And so these radio waves being sent from outer space are in fact able, in some cases, not in all cases, so I'm not saying that it's all the time, but in some cases, I would say probably 40% of the time, give or take translate into something that our cell phones can receive in the form of an SMS message. Now, I understand people use iMessage nowadays, they use WhatsApp, but they're, they use, you know, um, uh, many different forms of communication, what different types of messaging apps and all that people that, you know, they DM on Instagram and things like that, Snapchat, you, Facebook messaging, you name it. But the thing about this is that phones and still receive SMS text messages, it's not particularly outdated. There are still many, many people, millions of people that use the basic old form of texting, right? And the thing is, is that the phones are so sophisticated now that they can actually interpret multiple different radio waves that are incoming in order to be able to adapt to different things. So, for example, these phones, these new smartphones coming out, not just iPhones, but Android phones and all that, they have to be able to adjust just like they did from 3G to 4G or to, from 3G to LTE, rather. Then from LTE, now we're looking at 5G. So because their, their technology has to cover so many different broadbands, there's no way that they can mask that these phone companies or these technology companies can mask the incoming SMS messages that are caused by radio waves that are emitted from many light years away, in some cases from many distant galaxies, that then come and are translated into uh, a message in our phone. Now, that's not to say that, for example, you'll receive a message from outer space or a radio wave and you'll be able to make sense of it, but in the case that you might, the government doesn't want you knowing. And so what happens here? This Project Chime happens. It is a covert operation that only a handful of people within the surveillance, intelligence, and military-industrial complex uh, communities know about. Because ultimately... If the whole government was able to know or, or was given, was privy to this type of knowledge and this type of access, of course it would leak. That's why I hate when people use the term the government so broadly. I mean, I'm guilty of using it to myself, but the thing is, is that people think when someone says the government, it's these men in suits and, uh, you know, they're hiding in the shadows. The real ones, metaphorically, that are hiding in the shadows, pulling the strings in a lot of cases, are, again, the intelligence guys, the surveillance guys, and mainly what seems to be the military guys cooperating with the intelligence guys. So, again, the use of the term radio waves has been labeled and jammed into our subconscious through the use of media of many different forms of media across society into making us think that the only thing that radio waves are good for are for broadcasting, particularly broadcasting audio. Now, what if there are radio waves, well, EMF signals to, to say it properly, that come to earth that our phones can pick up? Now, they can pick up these signals but the problem is, is that there are people, thousands of people working underground, in this case in Canada, in one particular outpost, so to speak, from preventing our phones from receiving it. Because maybe it, it, it contains encrypted information. Maybe it is uh, an outreach from some type of advanced civilization from many, many light years away. I believe the farthest radio signal that came across to uh, that reached Earth was about half a billion light years away, if I'm not mistaken. And the thing about this is that it makes you think, maybe if, if there weren't people preventing us from receiving these messages, then maybe we would receive messages that would be able to be interpreted in a certain way. Maybe they would be, in some cases, very well articulate and people would be able to understand them very well. But again, this poses a, a risk for many reasons. Now, the government will say national security, but in reality, it's because they don't want to open up a can of worms that they can't close up again. It's very simple. Sometimes you can't cover it up. So in the projects that can't be covered up, in case of something leaking or getting out, what do you do? You hide it in plain sight. You make the mainstream media report it. 
You give, you know, you say Project Chime. You get, you make each letter stand for something, so people don't think to look any further. And then what do you do? You coincide those articles with articles saying that there's radio waves being coming in from outer space. We don't know what it says or what it means, when in reality, they know exactly what it means. There's a large chunk of people that are preventing us from receiving these messages on our phone. Because if they were not preventing us from doing this, my God, the amount of radio signals we would receive that our phones would pick up and our, and our tablets would pick up. And that's the other thing. This is why these people are also worried about something like Neuralink. And this is why some, a, a certain faction of the intelligence community has had to sort of bring Elon Musk in to the tent, so to speak. Not fill him in on everything, not even close, but fill him in on the things he needs to know. Because when you have a guy like Elon Musk who's working on Neuralink, where they can drill a chip into your brain and it does so many great things, you know, supposedly cures paralysis and, and so many things. And to trying to be able to speak telepathically becomes much harder for the government to curate and control a chip in your brain from receiving radio waves from outer space than it does a phone. And this is why they had to sort of let Elon Musk into the tent a little bit to say, listen, this is what's happening. These are the limits and you can't push these boundaries or things like that. So they understand technology is the future, but they need to control it in a way in which they can present themselves to be just as clueless as the public, when in reality, that is not the case, not even close. And you might think, okay, Dave, this is happening in North America. What about the rest of the world? You're telling, I mean, it's, reason, it's a reasonable argument if you play devil's advocate. One can argue, listen, Dave, you're telling me that every single radio wave coming from outer space is being blocked from every person's phone, mostly. And what I mean by that is there's a sort of unilateral non-documented verbal agreement between major world leaders that such as China, this is one thing they can agree on with the US, believe it or not, which is that setting up these underground outposts all over the world with large teams of people connected by the deep underground military bases, they can utilize and focus an entire team or faction of large, pe uh, large amount of people to prevent these radio signals from being translated or, 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 yeah, I guess you could say translated into text messages on our cell phones. Now, every so often something slips through, but because it slips through so, um, so very little often relative to how many radio signals are actually coming in, people kind of dismiss it. You ever notice you, you get text messages and your phone kind of acts up for maybe 10, 15 seconds, then it goes back to normal? This may in fact be what it is. Now, I'm not saying that's 100% what it is, but we can't rule out this possibility. And it's something that I think people need to delve into a little more. Because again, this is exactly how they play it. They put it out on the front and they say, look, you know, we got these satellites and this stuff and there's nothing crazy. But oh, by the way, we got some radio signals coming from outer space that we can't explain. So what do we do here? Actually, you know what? Let's tell the people we can't explain it. But let's also tell them about the above ground satellites and the projects that we're using only on the front end of things to cover it up. But we're not going to tell them we're covering it up. We're just saying, don't worry about it. We got the right things to track this stuff. So just, you know, leave it alone. It's in the mainstream media. The truth is out there. No, 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 no. The truth is not out there. It's being suppressed more than ever before. And people are seeing that. And I hope I can help bring that to you guys as well. Now, I'm not saying that these text messages have some type of warning or something, you know, like out of a movie, like, oh, you know, you're being controlled. You got to be set free. The government is not preventing text messages getting from you through radio waves from outer space because they're worried that something out there is trying to communicate with the regular people and trying to awaken us. It's possible, but I wouldn't... I, I put the chances at very slim. The government is blocking these messages and these radio signals from being translated into text messages that would pop up on our phones simply because they don't want anyone poking around and asking questions publicly. And some of these messages may contain information that they could use and apply to other classified projects, which is one of the reasons why the deep underground military bases exist. Why, if someone intercepts a radio signal that becomes a significant message, for the, in this case, the United States government. Why would they, for example, receive this message and then even through some type of very sophisticated encrypted messaging system, send that message or report that to their superior through technology? And what do they do instead of that? They read what message has been income, incoming. They block it out using their vast numbers of teams of people from um, 
from the public receiving this. They then take that information, hop on one of their um, underground, deep underground military bases, Magneto Leviton trains, which go at Mach 2 speeds, and then hop on over to whichever base underground, wherever in the world or in North America, they need to go to to report that to their superior officer. And this is one of the reasons why I did Project Flash last week, because of the fact that, or a couple, we, a couple weeks ago, whenever this episode airs, uh, because of the fact that sometimes people are focused too much on the bases, but what you need to realize is that the trains that connect these bases are a form of communication in and of itself. They use communication the old-fashioned way. They remember it in their head. They hop on the train. They have classified clearance, and then they go to whichever base or designated officer or underground outpost they need to. In some cases, I would dare to argue, like I've argued in Project Flash, that the, the, the trains that travel at those quick speeds are almost just as important as the underground military bases because a base becomes particularly nowadays, far less effective if there is no form of being able to get to and from that base to other locations around the country and in some cases around the world a lot quicker. So what I'd like to do is I'd like um, to get you guys, your guys' opinion on this because it's something that really caught my eye and I think it's something that should be discussed. Now, whether or not this is an entirely, uh, let's say, legitimate proposal, it's hard to say, but there's something going on with the radio waves that come to this planet that for some reason you're telling me we've never been able to intercept it, yet the government has. Okay, you can argue the government has the resources and we don't, but again, this is the problem with labeling electromagnetic uh, frequencies at a certain wavelength as radio waves, because they're really not radio waves. We as humans labeled it that. We did. Well, the people at the top did, and then the, the rest of society kind of just went with it because the rest of society didn't understand it the way that those at the, to at, at, at the top really do. So let me know what you guys think, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.